Gather around, hunters, and welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command. I'm Ryan Pass I'm Admiral Tyrick of the Battleship Devourer. As we continue our campaign against the Romulan Star Empire, and last time we managed to conquer the planet of 239, it is firmly under our control, giving us two heavy bases to use against the Romulans. And just to the south is 2310, which has a star base with an empire defense of five, which means as long as we don't actually have to fight the star base, we're going to stand a really good chance of stealing it which would give us another massive bonus for trying to conquer the rest of the interior. We're probably going to move around the edges of most of this empire just in order to knock down everything that we can. So I I think it's a good plan so far. We're just going to quickly top things off here, spend a little bit of prestige, drop back down under 10,000, unfortunately. And I'm going to go for the patrol because I want to take this starbase intact. If we took the base assault, assuming we could beat it, and dear god, some of the starbases in this are absurdly powerful assuming we could beat it we'd blow up the starbase and we want to keep it because we want to be able to resupply for more locations so we are currently in the battle we're going to prepare a scatter pack missile launcher and a wild weasel decoy in order to defend ourselves and attack not quite in that order the scatter pack is of course six missiles embedded into a single shuttle which we will dump out the back of the shuttle bay which will then explode and then just surprise anybody who happened to be a little bit too close and then the Wild Weasel Decoy mimics our drive signature, letting the enemy ship know that, uh, hey, this is not the real ship, that's the real ship. And any seeking weapons such as plasma torpedoes or missiles will go for that instead. It's a very useful piece of technology. Oh, this is not bad. This is what, a PRAX? I'm gonna guess as much. Yep, it's PRAX, so a pretty decent Romulan Dreadnought, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you have two R type plasma torpedoes, but I may be misremembering that. I don't know if the Prax is sort of the original homebrew new design battleship before the King Condors, of course, and the Rocks. So we're about to find out. Are you going to be incredibly dangerous to me? Uh, no, no, you're not. You're a light battle. You're a light dreadnought, honestly. A single R, two S's, and two F's. That's not an insane amount of damage at all. Also, no D type plasma torpedo. Uh, I feel sorry for you. You're dead. There's just no better way to put that. You simply do not have any way to defend yourself against what we're about to bring to you. So we'll set up our electronic countermeasure to the maximum level. Our forward shields as reinforced as they will go. Set on target. We're within range. So engage first with the Mervs. Let's get, let's get the distracting missiles up first. Allowing them to create a defensive screen in front of the real missiles. Which isn't to say that Mervs do no damage. But they don't do nearly as much damage. After all, a Merv being one missile that becomes six missiles, each of those missiles deals one-sixth of the amount of damage of all the normal missiles. So, ideally, any Merv that they shoot down was one-sixth as effective as shooting down one of these important blue missiles. We could also make the missiles purple or red, depending on which kind of engine we put in them. For anybody who needs to do some interior decorating, or exterior decorating, I suppose in this case, with their battleship. Never be afraid to mix and match colors. It can be a lot of fun. Unfortunately, you can't actually mix and match drive signatures in this game, which would be... I don't know any reason why you'd do it, but, you, but it'd be an interesting thing just to do. Alright, so the missiles are almost inbound on him. I'm anticipating a crash stop at any moment, and if he doesn't, he's going to die to this salvo. And there's the crash stop. Excellent. A couple of missiles already getting through, though. We're going to wait just long enough for the missiles to actually hit the intended target, being the Wild Weasel, and we will fire an immediate follow-up salvo. This is going to get through, and this is going to deal... A pretty monstrous amount of damage, especially if he keeps shooting at me. Stop firing at my ship. You're going to need those phasers to defend yourself. Honestly, if he used all these phasers to defend himself from this missile swarm, he'd be a lot better off. If he used them in conjunction with his defensive tractor beams, of which I assume he's probably got like four, maybe six, then he'd probably be able to hold them off in completely. He does, after all, have nine forward firing phasers. Uh, did you deploy something? No, that's, that's your old Wild Weasel. So, already getting penetrating through. He's trying to hold on to a few missiles, and then just right on through. 210 damage already. Let's prep the disruptors from long-range blinking, see if we can't get any additional systems offline. We're all ready to go with another salvo of missiles. I don't want to do it, because I know if I do, he's going to have another Wild Weasel ready. Unfortunately for him, his shuttle bay is destroyed. So, he's dead. Oh, he is beyond dead. Most of his power systems are offline. He's currently having to hold on to missiles from the previous salvo. He's not able to deal with them using his phasers yet. And he has no shuttle bay with which to dump a wild weasel to save himself. This missile salvo will utterly tear his ship apart. I don't think... How? Your shuttle bay was destroyed. 
I'm slightly irritated from that. But we will be able to kill him with this next salvo, I suppose. I was just looking forward to having this mission done relatively quickly. Oh, interesting. So apparently he stopped using the wild weasel at some point. Oh, he must... Yeah, I know what happened. The missiles that he had been holding on to with his defensive fragments nailed the wild weasel early. And so, because that happened, the wild weasel only lasts for a little bit longer after it's been destroyed. And by the time that the other missiles had actually gotten there, well, the wild weasel was no longer in existence, so it hookshot it around and slammed into the back of the ship, which is why his rear shield is currently gone. Yeah, this has got you. He's only got a few tractor beams. That, that really actually surprises me. Speed of zero. I assume he has some heavy weapon systems left, but after this, he will have none. Yep, catastrophic failure. He just cannot survive. Ah, the joys of missile ships. We simply bring more to the fight than anybody else. Well, mm, yeah, we do. We deal 288 damage per salvo. Assuming we hit everything. That's by no means, excuse me, that's by no means a guarantee. So, I'm just going to quickly check for a heavy bombardment cruiser, because it's kind of what we're looking to get into, or a BBX, uh, neither of which are currently available. The heavy bombardment cruiser may not actually be there yet. It may be something that is still in the works and has not been yet deployed to the fleet. Uh, I haven't checked that in a little bit, but we'll check it later. We're going to hop down here, see if we can't grab this before the planter. Okay, good. I'm holding action. So the base assault was there, but we were able to avoid it by taking the holding action mission again. So I suppose at this point... Wow. Um, there are two ways to win holding action. <laughs> uh, the original way is to kill everybody. Which, admittedly, is, you know, a pretty good way of doing things. However, we're staring down three very powerful battleships. And we only brought two battleships of our own. So we have the GCS Triceracon with us, which is, you know, really cool battleship. Uh, very powerful. Two R-type plasma torpedoes, three S-type plasma torpedoes, two F-type plasma torpedoes. However, they brought the King Condor, which is one of the most powerful plasma battleships ever devised. It has the same plasma armament, but it can also cloak. So it's rather scary, actually. And it also has four D-type plasma torpedoes, which will defend it from any incoming missile assault. Uh, the K-10R also is packing a pretty similar punch. It may be missing one of those S-type plasma torpedoes, but I'm pretty sure the K-10s are also packing twin R's, which is scary. And the Prax is the little mini battleship that we just got finished killing. So not particularly dangerous to us, so long as we can avoid him. So one of the ways that you can be beat holding action is you can kill everybody and then scan this for information. That will give you the most amount of prestige. The other way you can win this mission is by not fighting anybody, immediately sprinting back here and scanning this before anybody can kill you. Uh, it's a much... I almost want to say it's a better strategy, purely because if you destroy every single enemy vessel, then you then have to fly off the map before it'll actually end the mission, which can be a little bit annoying. Yeah, we're going to be right next to this Prax when he decloaks. It's going to hurt. I assume, yeah, that's an F, that's an S, and can I get around so you hit my stern shield? Apps, oh, that was a fake, interesting. He fired a pseudo F torpedo, which is, as the name suggests, a fake plasma torpedo that does no damage. Taking quite a few plasma hits already. Drop a mine. And we've got another one of these, plow it, plow it, plow it. Good, on the front shield, excellent. Uh, a stern shield, not much is there. Let's go maximum reinforcement to the stern shield to reinforce. Oh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna suck a lot. Uh, yellow alert. Just full power to engines. Do not stop for anybody. We're taking hits. We're taking hits we can't afford to take. So patch that. I need more speed. I need to get up to a speed of 31, which is the fastest speed you can go in this game. But we're almost to the listening post. We have taken a decent amount of damage onto our hull, but by getting to this listening post, the mission will end as soon as we finish scanning it, which takes almost no time at all. So that's not a concern whatsoever. I don't think they're going to be able to stop before I get here, although it's entirely possible they're hurting us quite badly. Come on, more speed. More power now reading data. Give me the data. Give me all that data before we run. Data transfer complete. Mission complete. And now the mission ends. And that's it. That's one of the, that's the cheap way of beating holding action. 
Oh, we generally don't do that unless, you know, suddenly the entirety of the current Romulan fleet shows up to kill us. Uh, yes, according to the data gathered by the listening post, the Romulan is currently gathering ships from other empires to stand against us. And we took the tile. Lovely. We did take quite a bit of damage in that mission, which, not great. 88 damage is not nearly as much as I thought it was actually going to be. I take that back. We took barely any damage. Uh, we're also out a couple of parts, but that's okay. Another quick check through for an XCB. Not currently available. However, there is our BBX. Okay, decision time. The BBX battleship is the refitted battleship. It's the biggest, nastiest thing in the Merak fleet. And as you can see, it's going to be bringing eight BRAC missile launchers, four C-RAC missile launchers, and then... Oh, wait, no. Really? Huh. Who'd have thunk it? They took off the Mervs. Why would you ever do that? So the BBM is the battleship we currently have. And it has two Missile Rack A's, six Missile Rack B's, two Missile Rack C's, and two Missile Rack V's. Which is a lot of firepower that we can put out relatively quickly because of the Mervs. The battleship, just the X-type battleship, that gets rid of the Merv Racks, goes back to a full Missile Rack B out lo loadout, plus four C's. It's the same number of launchers, but without the Merv, and because of that, it's shy about, oh, ten missiles from its salvo. Which, in the current era, 12 missiles is not getting through. So I suppose the BBX is not what we're looking for. Instead, what we're going to be looking for is this. This is the XCB, the Advanced Bombardment Cruiser. Now it brings four, 8 Disruptor 4s, which is 2 less than we currently have, although they all fire forward, which 2 of our Disruptors on our current battleship fire backwards. In addition to that, it'll have 8 Phaser Xs, which is, again, drawing down a little bit from our current setup. But again... Their Phaser X's, which is a step up in firepower. And then to add on to that, it has two Phaser G's covering the flanks, which is a very nice bit of point-blank range firepower. The missile loadout for this thing is going to be six Missile Rack B's, two Missile Rack C's, so only eight there, but then we bring it with six Missile Rack V's. That's 36, 37, 38, 44 missiles per salvo. And at the end of the day, it has 14 total missile launchers as opposed to the 12 we currently have. This thing packs one hell of a punch. Now, it is smaller. It is, I don't know about faster. That'll actually be an interesting thing to find out. But compared to our battleship, it's absolutely a step up in firepower. Although, with that said, it's going to have significantly less in the way of support systems, like transporters 5 compared to 10, and no fighters to add on top of it. So we become a much more devastating missile launching platform should we get one of those. However, they're currently not here where we are, so it might take a little while for them to filter down to our area of... Never mind, there it is, that's the XCB, thank you. So, yeah, um, Devour, you were amazing. I can't, can't say enough about that, but... Ancient Kings is our new best friend. Ah, oh, let's load you out. Let's load you out for bear. We're going to go and prepare to cause absolute mayhem and havoc. 170 missiles. I believe that's 20 more than our maximum last time. Up to six shuttles. No fighters to have to worry about. And let's fully kit out, because we have 10,000 prestige, let's fully kit out everything that we've got. We are in the pinnacle of Merak weapon design, even though we have gone way down in comparison when it comes to transporters and the like. Still, five transporters is not bad. All right, we're fully kitted out. We're locked in. We've captured the station here, so let's start pushing into Romulan territory and saying hi. I'd rather not my first mission being against a monster. Monsters are relatively easy. And this is friendly territory. That's why we're fighting monsters. Holding action. Sure, we'll take the mission we just took. Worst comes to worst, we can run away. Also, you may have noticed that an advanced bombardment cruiser is incredibly cheap. This is very true. So, we're fighting off against a Super Hawk and a Frigate. So, the Super Hawk shouldn't be all that difficult. Let's find out how fast we actually go. We took a pretty significant hit to speed, but part of that you have to remember is because we are now using Phaser Xs. So, before we were using Phaser 1s, and Phaser 1s are considered to be the primary capital ship Phaser, they're quite good. I can't knock that at all. However, they are also uh, limited. Not because they're not great, because they are, but when you compare them to a Phaser X mount, 
they just don't break the same amount of firepower because a Phaser X can be overloaded and a Phaser 1 can't. So by overloading your Phaser 1, or your Phaser X, what you do is you cause about 50% more damage, which means you'll do about 15 damage at point blank range as opposed to 10. It's rather astonishing just how much damage you can deal with one of these things. By the way, watch this. This is everything right with the Merak. Let's also increase our speed, get up the power here. We're not quite able to go maximum power, but that's, again, kind of to be expected. He's going to be able to wild weasel all of this. None of this is actually going to get through. If we had been smart about this, Mervs and maybe one of the b racks really wouldn't have been all that important. Although, I would be very interested to see how many drones we can control with this. So we're going to pick up our pace, go to a pretty high speed, also reinforce the rest of the shielding, and we should be good. And you'll notice we have little kitty cat ears on our battlecruiser. Those are the advanced communications links which allow us to control this massive swarm of death and destruction. I love it, it's so beautiful. It's 44 missiles. Now again, every single one of these missiles is going to miss because of what he's about to do. He's going to go from, yep, he's crash stopping now. Let's prepare to follow up with the salvo that will actually kill him. And missile impact. So we can't actually control massive salvos, unfortunately. We can only control so many, but that's okay. Because when you're bringing this many missiles to the fight, do you really need anything else? We're going to pull off over in this direction in case he starts increasing speed, which he is. So it will more likely drag him into these missiles before these missiles. Uh, we have a little tiny ship coming towards us. It's not tiny. It's a JHX. Let's send a probe, find out exactly what it is we're dealing with at this moment. A pretty significant amount of plasma torpedo armament, actually. He's got two Fs and a G. The G is an extended range plasma torpedo, which is a fairly eff effective weapon. Uh, a lot of players, however, would prefer the Fs because F-type plasma torpedoes, once you finish charging them, don't need any additional energy to hold them. It makes them pretty useful. And he's trying to protect himself, and it's just not working out, and just the Mervs got through his shields. Oh, let's not go off the edge of the map. And you're dead for. Yep. Yep, that's what we're doing. Let's see if we can influence him to crash stop just from the Merv volley. So, so he's launched his plasma torpedo, one of them. It's a very short-range plasma torpedo, just being an F-type. So it's not actually going to get to us. Uh, we're going to follow up immediately. And again, avoid going off the map. We're going to follow up immediately with a normal salvo. I don't think he can shoot them all down. He will tractor some of them. But this is still going to be a pretty significant amount of firepower. Let's try and get the disruptors on target, see how wide of a bank we have. Pretty good, actually, for the port side. Oh, didn't want to do that. I only wanted to fire just the disruptors. So let's reselect hard point four. Excellent. All right, now we can go for free towards our target. And that's what the ship can do. Just monstrous salvos of missiles, the likes of which almost no one has ever witnessed and told tale about. Now, we can actually be run dry. While 44 missiles seems like an almost impossible salvo to defend against, we've done it in skirmish before when we've done our little... Uh, random battles during the live streams where we've taken pretty much any ship and thrown it up against each other and we found that the Federation battleship, the biggest Federation vessel in the game, can actually survive the incoming salvo and destroy the heavy bombardment cruiser. It's a tough fight, but it can absolutely do it. The problem is the heavy bombardment cruiser is like one third the price, so if you're trading one battleship almost for one heavy bombardment cruiser it's not a great setup. All right, cruising on through. Now, unlike the last time we just did this mission, because we annihilated everybody on the map, it doesn't actually search for the wind condition at this point. I don't quite know why. I'm not sure what their thinking on that was, but it does mean that we now have to cruise completely off the map. So we should actually be relatively close to the edge of this map. And I think, yep, we're coming right up on it already. And we will zip on out of here and go and take our information, top secret information or less, to Marak High Command. Our nimble little battlecruiser. It's nice to be back in something smaller-ish. I like the Merak battleship. Well, the Merv battleship. It's quite powerful. It's a very lovely vessel. Unfortunately, um, it's sluggish. Which, you know, it's not really the vessel's fault. You can't really fault a battleship for not being super nimble at the helm. But uh, I would prefer something a little bit more. So we did actually manage to neutralize the tile... Oh, and we just have such a powerful grasp on the Northern Hemisphere right now. 
of the Romulan Star Empire. We're going to start heading way south, knocking down most of these. Romulus and Remus is right here and here, or maybe here, if I'm recalling correctly. So we're relatively close to the Romulan homeworld. That's going to be one heck of a fight once we finally get it underway. So let's head back home. We're going to need more missiles. We're going to need to slowly grow out towards them. That's one actually the main problem that we're going to start running into the, now. We are much more reliant on our missiles. Where the battleship could kind of get away with using its additional other weapon systems, we not so much. We could get in close and use our heavy weapons and tight the disruptors and the phaser X's, especially now that we have effectively 12-ish phaser X's, which I believe is more than we had for our battleship. But once you start doing that, you have to start trading armor. And we really don't have quite as much armor. Sad fact, but it is true. All right, so that's going to do it for today's episode. We've managed to get ourselves our brand new heavy bombardment cruiser. We've managed to secure three important bases up here in the north with the Romulans. Oh, they are in a bad way. Even though they've only lost a couple of tiles, they've lost some very important strategic tiles. And we're going to be able to take high advantage of that. Anyway, I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive a notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon. Leave a comment and I will see you all in the next episode.